you know you had you can't put a deadline on your own success it's crazy yeah it ruins people you know you know those people that are like by 30 if i don't have to and it's like then what's what's gonna happen at 30 if you don't you know what i'm saying like yeah. you know, what happens <laughs> you know? if there's anything put a deadline on your commitments i commit to stop eating like this I commit to stop spending like this. I, I commit to to stop charging up in credit. I commit to stop overspending. I commit to making sure I increase my income. I commit to getting this license. I commit to getting this education. I commit to going to this conference. So put a deadline on that. When it actually materializes and when it comes through, listen, I, I've said this many times. I paid my entire 30s to repay the mistakes in my 20s. Now that I'm 48 years old, I should be experiencing this in my 30s, not my 40s. You know why? Because I wasn't willing to pay the price fully in my 20s. I was goofing around in my 20s. I wouldn't surround myself with wise people in my 20s. I was spending money because I made more money than a lot of people in my family in my 20s because I started my own business. I wasn't smart with it. I wasn't wise with it. I wasn't surrounded with the right people with it. So if you're gonna put a deadline on something, put a deadline to stupidity. Put a deadline to being sick and tired, being sick and tired. From this day forward, I refuse to be sick and tired and sick and tired, and I will start creating things to make sure my life changes. Put a deadline to that. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And we have another reaction video here to this independent artist named Russ. Now, my daughter is all over this guy's music. I mean, she's like, Poppy, if you can get him in an interview, I'm flying out from Chicago to Dallas. I'd love to meet him, blah, 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 blah. And go figure, my team found an interview with him with a gentleman, personal development specialist named Jay Shetty. And uh, some of the things he talks about, Russ talks about, is the areas of law of attraction, giving power of thoughts, his relationship with money, and uh, manifesting to put the work in to get what you want out of your career or whatever endeavor that you're in, and also putting deadlines on your success. So let's take a look here into this interview by Jay Chetty with Russ. You've, you've mentioned manifestation a, f a few times, and, and I think you've taught us some really, in my opinion, again, very personal and refreshing ways. Yeah. We hear about the word a lot, mm -hmm. and randomly, you're obviously someone who believes it, lives it, knows it, is experiencing it. What is the process that you have practiced for you that has yeah. worked for you that others could understand? Because I think there's a lot of like misconceptions around it, but for someone who it's working for and someone who believes in it, yeah, how would you describe it for you? It's yourself? that knowing thing you were talking about. It's not necessarily just seeing it, oh, I can see myself with money, and then like then that's it. Now you're gonna get money. It's more so knowing it and also feeling it and and not just like excuse me, not just, oh, like I said, you can see the beach house you bought your mom. It's, it's what does it feel like though? What it, like. Listen, you want something in your life. I mean, how do you go about doing it? Say you got a dream, you were daydreaming one day and boom, I saw this beach house or I saw this car or I saw this business or I saw this reality of a family I'm gonna have. What is going on in your mind? What's going through your head? When you're looking at your life in this fancy word called manifest, manifesting. You know, a lot of people in the church taught me this is like, it's not a biblical word. I don't know, I don't care. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm over people over analyzing and over religiousifying, is that a word? Or over religiousifying words because they're not quote unquote biblical, but it's a word. But what are you looking at in terms of goals, your dreams? Because I don't know about you, man. Goals and dreams fire me up. They help me realize what type of price I'm willing to pay for the goals and dreams that I have in my head that God has inspired in me. And so listen, it's nobody else for you to understand. It's nobody else for them to understand. It's only for you to understand. And um, it's not just something you have in your head. You know, the whole thing with, uh, you know, whatever the mind can conceive and believe in it can achieve. It's part of manifesting. It's part of getting what you want out of your life into reality. What does it feel like when you see your mom's reaction to getting there? The you beach go. House? He's can getting you, specific. Can you feel that? Can you feel the car turning the corner to the beach? It's about immersing yourself yeah. in that feeling as if it was going on right now. Mm -hmm. And when you do that on a daily basis, Woo, that is a powerful it's thing. not long before yes. reality catches up with <laughs> your thoughts. You know, come and on. Like I like said, this guy it just has to be something you believe and buy into this whole theory you know if you believe that we are just the universe experiencing itself and yeah, think about this somebody in your family your friends your neighborhood prophesied in your life that you're gonna be a doctor you're gonna be a dentist you're gonna be an athlete 
You're going to be a teacher. You're going to be a police officer. You're going to be a soldier. Whatever the case may be, somebody prophesied and planted that seed in your life. And when you received it, no matter what age, what age you were, you thought about it. And you started putting your eyes and attention to things that are around it. You know, I'm thinking about my son right now as he's immersed in video games. He's immersed in, 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 in school activities and summer school activities. And I'm thinking about the things that he's paying attention to and the way he's seeing the world. Because somewhere in his life, seeds were planted and now he saw a vision for himself and now he's attracting himself to the, towards those things that allow that dream to continue to develop and grow. You know, we're all in tune and connected to the infinite and all these things. Then you're going to be fine as far as as far as this you know method goes. But if you don't, then it's not for you. You know, and, God and was bless. was that the best thing you manifested? The beach house. Yeah. Uh, it was one of them for sure. Yeah. But just like this whole career, man, just this whole life was a complete uh, product of law of attraction. But also being proactive. I wasn't just sitting That's there. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, no, you don't just like click your heels and go back to Kansas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. It's, Tell us uh, about the work. Tell yeah. us about the product. There. By the way, before we get into this, yes, it is more about having dreams. It is more about having faith. It is more about just having a thought in your head and you're looking to attract things. No, you got to get to work. And so I'm reminded of a scripture in the New Testament in Matthew, and it reads like this. And in all things, whatever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. But I also want to qualify that too as well. Not only should you pray about it and ask for it, but you need to work at it. For example, the saying we have around our office is pray like it's up to God, but work like it's up to you. Speaking of work, let's get into this part. The actual like, so we get it, the, the immersion, the feeling, yeah. which, and I know you're doing the other part too. Tell us about the strategy, the the networking, the the, yeah. the actual skill. Yeah. Because you have to have a skill, right? Well, skill can get developed. Because here's the thing too, Russ, from my, what I understand, is an independent artist. So no other producer, no other... A uh, 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 record house. Nobody's putting him out there. He's nobody's putting him on game. Nobody's putting him out there. He's got to put himself out there. He's got to create the connections. As an independent artist, you got to go out there and put your name out. For example, us in the insurance business is an independent insurance agent. You got to put your name out there in the marketplace. People got to know what you do. It's not like you have a large office like a New York Life or a Northwestern Mutual or a Merrill Lynch or a Charles Schwab that you have a brand name that you can pass a business card and people kind of recognize what you do. No, as an independent agent, as an independent artist, you got to let people know what you do. You got to go out there and let people know that you are good. You know, skill is developed. I was not the most skilled when I started at all. All of it sucked. So, um, you know, you develop skill through repetition and through practice and putting in the work. But yeah, I don't think people understand that you actually need to put in the work and be persistent. You just also have to couple it with a very positive mindset, but. From the quote of the prophetess, Kim Kardashian, she said. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You know, uh, Will Smith talks about um, the concept of, and I've like mentioned this a lot, like laying a brick a day until you have a wall. Yeah. You know, I think his dad took them, you yeah. know the story I'm talking about? Yeah, and they yeah. like did the brick a day, like how are we gonna build a wall? And you go out there and you lay a brick a day. So I really resonate with that whole, um, story and concept. And I think it's really true. I think a lot of people are just focused on the whole bigger picture and like, how am I going to be this famous musician? Like I haven't even made a song yet. It's like, you're not supposed to be thinking about like all that to the point where it's daunting and crippling. You're just supposed to, you know what? I know I'm going to get there. I can feel what it's like, but in the meantime, I'm going to lay a brick a day. I'm going to make a song a day or make a beat a day or find samples every day or study every day. Like as long as you're doing something towards the bigger picture, a small thing every day, you're good. By the way, powerful, powerful, powerful lesson there. Because oftentimes people think, you know, it's so it's so difficult to become a millionaire, so difficult to make $100,000 a year, so difficult to have your own business, so difficult to have, no, it's really not, it's really not that difficult. Um, listen, I've been at this thing for 23 years. I've been at business for 23 years. I tell you this, the hardest level of income for me to hit was my first $100,000. No, it was not my first million. It was my first $100,000. Do you know why? Because I had to learn how to build the bricks. I had to learn what skills I sucked at, what skills I was average at, what skills I was pretty decent at. And every day you go out there, you learn how to prospect, you know, make phone calls. You know how to shake hands. One of the things that uh, my office loves seeing is I've been sharing some of these videos from back in the days, videos of myself 
10, 15, 20 years ago when I first started, when I first started my career, my, my team loves to see that. I don't know why, but after hearing this, I get now why, because they often confuse the version that we are today, the version of Russ that he is today. They forget the version of when he first started. They forget the version of he had no skills. You get, forget the version of nobody was saying yes to him. Nobody was booking him. Nobody's booking you. But next thing you know, a year later, two years later, five years later, everybody's looking for you. Everybody's following you on social media. Everybody's doing this. So consider that as you're laying your career, the bricks of your career, the bricks of your business, the bricks of your finances, the bricks of your reputation, it has to improve every day. Because if you do that, if you do increase of 1% every day, increase 1% every day, guess what? 365 days later, boom, you just traveled around your economic world, your entrepreneurial world, the world of your career, and you're a much better person today because you went through the practice of the process of laying that brick every day and you're much better for it. That's yeah. real, and, that, and that's how it has to be built. Yeah. Everyone always think it's like that, the wallet analogy that you're talking about. You kind of just turn up. I was thinking about that one day. I was, I was looking out into the city of LA and I was just thinking like, someone had to think about mm -hmm. this. Right. I was in Dubai recently. I was thinking the same. It's like, it's just a desert. It's a, no, it's a bunch of ideas. Yeah, and someone had to think about it first. Like they would have looked out onto like desert and, yeah. and had to think about it, but we don't think about that because we walk into a city. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. When I was in the Persian Gulf War, is a 18, 19 year old, we went to the Persian Gulf in Dubai. And this is what Dubai looked like. It was a war zone. It was an area for all military personnel to assemble and to come into Kuwait and to come in and make sure we protect Kuwait from Iraq. And then 20 years later, I go back as an entrepreneur. I go back with my mentor, Patrick, but David and the newly joined form company that were part of PHP agency. And next thing you know, we're jumping off a yacht in the Persian Gulf. <laughs> Completely flipped my mind. We're staying at the Palms Jumeirah in the Atlantis. Fast forward 20 years, somebody had to think that Dubai could be this massive epicenter that it is today, but it started 20 years ago, not what it is 20, 20 plus years later on. You walk into, every, like, that's what I find fascinating is that every day you're walking around in somebody's idea. That's mm. how you know thoughts are powerful. Oh, like, what a we're great sitting idea. Into, like, what a great chair thought. was somebody's idea to make it look like this and the cushions to be this soft and these shoes. So, like you're just constantly surrounded by other people's ideas. And I think the really cool thing about free will is contributing your ideas back into the infrastructure of what's already going on. And by the way, if you think your life sucks, do something about it. Improve that problem that you have in your life. Don't complain about it. Don't feel like you're a victim of it. That you have nothing to do for it and you can't get behind a solution to allow yourself not only to be a victim to it, to be a person that can improve that situation because you can. And guess what happens? That's how the seeds of entrepreneurship are created. You know, when, when you're thinking that, man, my life sucks. Well, stop thinking that your life sucks and somebody owes you something and that somebody's gonna give you something to bail you out, that you're entitled to a solution. No, that's, this is free enterprise. This is free will, this is America, this is capitalism. Free to buy, free to sell free to win and free to fail. And when you think about this scenario, the benefit of us living in this country, the United States of America, is that, as he said, you're in the idea, in this experiment of freedom, which is called the United States of America, where people can be what they want to be. Regardless of what you think you're at right now, whatever systemic thing you're part of right now, do you think you can't help? Listen, same issue happens to me. When I first got involved in the financial services business, got involved in the insurance business, I was the youngest out of the entire office. Nobody's paying attention to me. I do a seminar and workshop, people thought I was the assistant, not the guy leading the seminar. When I finally had some success in my business, they asked me to speak at an insurance conference. I walk backstage and look at me, yeah, can we speak to Matt Sapal because he's the one speaking on stage, do you work for him? No, I'm him. And so put your name out and, and don't take things so personal. Be the person that innovates and creates and next thing you know, you trailblaze a path that greatly blesses people that are coming in behind you. That's so powerful, man. Yeah. That, what you just said now is so powerful. How, how, do we, how do we know if our idea is good or is that even the right question? I don't think that's the right question. I think, I think is it serviceable, you know? Does it help? Mm. Great know, point. Is it just for you or is it, are you serving a bigger purpose? That's why I think music is really great because we're, you know, it's a service for the world we're providing, you know, big or small, however you want to quantify it is on you, but it's definitely a service that we're providing. And I realized, you know, after I got money and fame and whatever, um, 
I was like, man, the whole point of this, like I had, I literally said this to myself the other day in the shower. This is where all my ideas come from. <laughs> and I don't, feel, where, bad where, about, I don't feel bad about that. Where do your best ideas come from? Yeah, the shower is one of mine and over cigar between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. is the other one. Pharrell said the same thing. Yeah. Um, but I literally just blurted out. I was like, I need more money so I can help more people. It it's just is. like a there thing that is. blurted out. There it is. And I was like. See, oftentimes people think that money is evil. That money is the devil. You want money, a lot of it, because you want to fund and finance dreams and goals and the assistance of helping other people. And I'm thinking about how much people in a church twist scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, because it reads like this. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. But check this out though. It's for the love of money. Not that money is evil. It's the love of money that you made money your God. But guess what? Money is a tool, is a magnifier, is it an exposure of character in your dreams and your goals. Because if you're a greedy person, guess what's going to ha happen to money when you get it? It's going to expose that greed. But flip side to that is if you're a giver, guess what money is always going to magnify? Money's going to magnify that you want to bless and help and serve other people. So the question for you is, as you have these dreams and goals, what will money do for you? What will it expose? And what will it magnify? I was like, yeah, that's the whole point of all this. I had this like epiphany where I was like, I'm 28. I made it. The only thing left to do is obviously I keep making it, but it's to help other people make it. That's right. You know, and I just think that our goal is to just give. And I think there's a very uh, misled sort of idea that we're supposed to be getters. Mm. And I think um, Bugis actually mentioned this concept to me about being a go-giver instead of a go-getter. I think a lot of times, especially with music. Yeah, great book here by Bob Berg, Being the Go-Giver. And so here's the thing too as well. If you want to be a bigger giver, how many of you right now want to be bigger givers? If you want to be a bigger giver, guess what you got to do first? You got to get. Because you can't give, we haven't gotten yet. So somebody say, I want to create a youth center. I want to create a, I want to create a, 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 a league for um, disenfranchised children. Awesome. Well, guess what you need? Not only do you need money, you also need influence and relationships. So in the area of you getting, yes, there isn't time of, yes, you got to take care of yourself. It's an area of selfishness that is important because you have to do it yourself. You got to lead the way. You got to make the money. You got to get the money. You got to build the relationships. You got to build the contacts. You have to have influence. You have to build your reputation. That takes time. I'm just wondering here for a second, for those of you who follow, follow the Bible and read the Bible and follow, and go to church, why do you think it took Jesus until he was 33 years old to start his ministry? You ever wonder that? I mean, he's the, if he's the son of man, why wasn't he doing it at 10 years old? Why wasn't he doing his ministry at 15? Why wasn't he doing it at 21? Why 33? Did you ever wonder that? It's probably one of the questions I'll ask him when I get to heaven. Some of the questions you might ask uh, some of your heroes in the Bible, questions that you'll have once you get to heaven. But why 33? Why do you have to be in a position of getting first in order to get? Is because you can't help other people if you haven't helped yourself. Just thinking about what can we get, you know, and what can I get from the world when I put this song out and so on and so forth. But it's more so about what can I give to the world? Tell me about a message or a piece of fan mail or an experience you've had with a fan or a listener that made you realize how impactful music is on someone. I'm sure you've had some phenomenal and you know. I, it's so many, man, to yeah. be honest. And I'm so fortunate that yeah. it's so many, but every day people are sending me messages of you saved my life and you meet people and they're crying their eyes out because it's <laughs> like you helped them so much. And that's, you know, that's when you realize it's just way bigger than you, you know? It's just way bigger than you. And like I said, I think, I'm just excited to keep giving to the world. And I know that could sound cliche and like, you don't believe that I'm actually that generous, but it's really like, you know, anyone around me knows, like I'm always trying to help, you know, I'm always trying to like give people money or whatever, just because it's like, that's, you know, my mom told me a long time ago um, when I first started getting money, she said, uh, money is meant to change people's realities. Wow. 
power of a praying mom. I don't know much about Russ's mom or what faith she believes in or she isn't or she even believes in faith, but it's a powerful statement there to make to your son. Kudos to you, mom. And so if you have the ability to do it, you should. So I get a kick out of just like, you know, I'll see a fan on Twitter and they're like raising money for like their dance program. And I'm just like, here, you know, a kid will send me a DM, like, you know, my mom's funeral. And I'm just like, why not? You know, and I don't need to post about it. It's what you're supposed to do. But think about this real quick. You make a lot of money. Who would you like to give to? What would you like to give to? One of my favorite things to do is if, if I'm about and I'm at the mall or I'm shopping, do my own thing, is I'm also paying attention to the single mom and the single dads that I see because I remember being a single dad at once and I had three kids I was raising and uh, I remember how tough it was. And uh, when I'm seeing the conversation between the single parent and their kids, oh, mijo, you know, we don't have enough money. You know, help dog, we, that dude, you, know, you like that, but man, I could just look at the parent's face to see the money and the calculator going on in their head. And one of the things I like to do, for example, the last time this happened was at a men's warehouse. And I told the guy at the men's warehouse, I said, whatever, whatever they buy, make sure you put it on my car, but don't let him know it's me. So I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna be off in the corner here looking at other things, but I want you to slide my credit card to pay for it. And all I want you to do based on who paid, for, when they ask a question, who paid for it, I just want you to tell them, God loves you. And so I want you to say, don't say my name. Another area, we're in LA, LA Fitness. And I noticed a, a young lady was in a, in a, uh, in, in a uh, what do you call those, a walk, walkers. And I was asked, you know, I asked the trainer, why is she in a walker? She was, man, she just got into a bad accident. She's learned how to rehab and, and walk again and get her strength back up. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to make sure that her membership from here going forward is on my card. And I want you two times a week, three times a week, whatever she's in here training for, I want you to charge her personal training fee to my credit card. And let me know what her progress is, but I don't want you to let her know it's me. Because I don't want to come to the gym and feel awkward because she feels like she owes me something. I want her to come in here, whoever this is, and I just want you to tell her, God loves you. God loves you. These are some of the simple things that I like to do when, when I have money. And so what are some of the things that you want to do when it comes to you having abundance come your way? When you have savings, when you have more income coming in than expense because you've been a wise steward to your finances, what would you like money to do for you as a giver? I'm supposed to give it back. And I, and I think I'm also a very big believer in not blocking the natural flow of the universe. And I think money is a force of energy. And when you get it and you're just focused on keeping it, you're going to lose it. <laughs> By the way, I love this. Nice job, Russ, so far in this interview. I'm impressed. Love to meet this guy. wonder who his business manager is. I wonder who his financial manager is outside of his mother because he's obviously taking some wisdom from somebody. But you ever wonder why money is called currency? You ever wonder that? Why is it called currency? Because in my mind, when I hear the word and see the word currency, I see the word current. As in like a river flowing, it's current. Like you're either against the current or with the current. And how many guys want to get with the current with finances versus against the current with finances? So yes, money does has to flow. Now, there's a period there where you have to capitalize. And sometimes people say, well, does that mean that I don't have to save or invest money? No, no, you have to save money. You have to capitalize. You have to put it together. Sometimes people call that as a financial dam. But what, what happens when you have a financial dam? What does it do? You're capturing that energy to so therefore it can provide energy to another city to give it light in life. That's why you want to corral energy, you want to corral finance, you want to corral that current into a financial dam. So therefore, boom, it can be channeled and focused energy wise into a direction that you want it to magnify the goals and dreams and aspirations that you have in your heart. So that's what money is for, it is currency to flow and to bless other people, flow. And guess what, guess what happens when you give it out? It's gonna flow back to you in abundance. You go throw it back out, flows back into your abundance. Don't be tight with it. Don't be in fear of investing in yourself. Don't be in fear of investing in other people. Of course, be a wise steward, be discerning. Don't just say, hey, just because they have their handout that you give them money, just because they have their handout, be discerning with it because you wanna make sure that it's being spent wisely. And by the way, there's moments there that people won't spend it wisely, but don't have that more the rule than the exception. Mm -hmm. So I always get money and give it right back. And I think that's why it keeps coming in. Yeah. I just give it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's given in your own way, right? Like I think what I love about what you're saying and, and you're talking about the cliche of giving, to me it's you figured out how you like giving. Yeah. And and that's yeah. what matters for all of us because yeah. some people are going to do charity work, some sure. people are going to build schools, some people are going to support the people around them, some people are going to help 
Yeah. I pass it on to you. That's correct because giving is more than just finances. It's time, talent, and resources. Twitter or whatever who, who can't even pay for their right. mother's funeral or whatever it is. Like, you know, the point is of supporting in the way you can. Yeah. And in the way you feel called to. Yeah. Because that's all you have. And it tripped me out when, like I said, when Boogies brought this concept to me. and Go giver. Yeah, go giver. And, and I was like, man. I never fully understood the complete reason why I got so much out of life already. And he was like, it's because you gave so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about it like that. That's why people love artists. That's why people love athletes and celebrities because they see in them giving of them to give them excitement, entertainment, a vision, a hope, a dream. That's why people love that. People love influencers because you give an example. You give, good or bad, by the way, you give your audience, the people that you influence, a vision, a hope, and an excitement. That. But, you know, when you think about, you know, I have more songs out than some of the veterans in the game, most of them. You know, I got 500 songs. I just like Damn. the game I give to try to like... Songs. I give a lot and I don't think about it while I'm doing it. I'm like, I'm about to give this so I can get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm just like giving it because I naturally want to do that. But it makes a lot of sense that, you know, givers get more than the getters. Because by the way, he's operating not from a scarcity mentality. He's operating from an abundance mentality. And by the way, just don't think that because it's you, it's unique to you. No, there's a proverb out there that said, there's nothing new created under the sun. Everything that's supposed to be created has been created. It's just that it's different because it's coming from you. So don't think that you give away a project, you give away money, you give away an idea, you give away an invention. You don't think you can create another one yourself? Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't share, I can't share. I can't let anybody, guess what happens when you don't share those anybody? Nobody knows about it. You don't even know about it because you're afraid to give it. And by the way, some of the best people out there, I love YouTube University these days. You know why? Because if you want to get wealth, you want to get rich, you want to have success in anything, you want to do a how-to drop an engine, how-to tie a tie, how-to make 100000 make a million bucks, guess what you can find it? YouTube University. Free on Google. And the best folks out there are people willing to give things for free. They're giving value to the marketplace. In return, the marketplace brings value back to them in abundance. Yeah. You know? And even when you're giving and it's not even being loved or received that way, but you continue to give. Yeah. Because sometimes it's easy to give when everyone's kind of like, oh, we Receiving love you. They give it, you yeah. the validation. But sometimes you're just giving because- Well, mm -hmm. see, but if you're only giving it to get something back, then you're not you're giving, really giving anything. You're loaning it. That's, That's right. what I always <laughs> tell people. I, I, like, nice job, bro. I like okay, this Houdin, guy. Don't give me love if you're only giving it to get something back. Because then, then it's called manipulation, right? If you're, if you're doing that- you want something in return. No, you want to give for the sake of giving. You know, sometimes people ask me, well, Matt, when, when people ask me when we're, when we're driving around and sometimes people are asking and begging for money, it says, how come you don't give money? Because I want to make sure I give them what they really need, which is food, right? Now, sometimes, sure, do I get hand money? People, you know, at the CVS or Walgreens are, are asking for cash and, and money. I'll give cash. And my hope and prayer is that they do something with it. Can they blow it? Can they pocket it? Can they scam me? Can they scam the charity? Can they scam the nonprofit? Sure. But I did my part. And so I also want to make sure that when I'm giving, it's also smart because there's also a stewardship responsibility, meaning that that whatever resources or finances or opportunities have been given to you, it's not from you. It was originated from a higher power. For some of you guys call this the man upstairs. I believe it's the man upstairs. But whatever you do with the least, you could be then entrusted or not trusted with the most. Then it's conditional. And it's not giving, you're loaning me love. Mm. You're, you're only loaning me love for an extended period of time until I give it back. I don't do that. I'll, I give love and give game and give money and whatever it is. I don't expect anything back. I give it because that feels like the right thing to do and it aligns with my spirit. How do you feel or how do you it's respond awesome. when you realize someone just loaned it to you when you thought that they were giving I it? I expect most people to act like that. Right. Because most people are like that. Most people are out for self. They're very self-serving. And so I know that most people are operating from a place of I'm not doing any favors and I'm not doing anything for free. And so I'm not really surprised. I'm not that naive. You know, I think you can be, you can be naive if you want to the point of like, I really thought you were just helping me out. <laughs> it's like, okay. 
By the way, that's a very good point. There's, you know, that's why even for me, when people give me compliments, people give me praise or people give me edification, there's very few people I take praise and edification to pat on the back from. The majority of people that give me a praise and edification pat on the back, it's, it kind of goes through one ear out the other. I hear it's pat on the back. It's, I don't really internalize it. kind of give you a little secret with, into myself. But there's only very few people that I know that I can take that praise because they want nothing from me. Like I tell my children, babe, listen, the reason why I want you to date the right man is because I want nothing from you. But I want you to make sure that you go into this relationship equipped with the right knowledge to make the right decisions. It's all I'm asking for you. It's all I'm asking. I'm not asking something for you for me. I want you to live a better life. That's probably the only thing I'm asking for you if, if you really want to boil it down to brass tacks. But I want you to make sure that you're equipped with the right knowledge and information and educate yourself and be aware of the things that you may not be aware of because you're learning from a man, hopefully that you think has experience. Because I want you to have a I want you to have your best life possible. And if this relationship or this conversation or this career, or this business decision is not in your best interest, I want you to know it right now. You know, I don't assume anyone's just helping me out. I, I like you get in trouble and you get your feelings hurt when you assume people are as kind as you. Mm. Or people, you know, not to be like I'm the most kind person ever, but you can get your feelings hurt if you assume everyone is like you. Mm -hmm. that's when you get disappointed and, you know. By the way, a lot of new entrepreneurs, when they sell the product or service or they're recruiting to build their own company, they recruit and build their own team, they get hurt in this area too as well. Because now when you start a business, now when you start a big, and you start a big decision to do something to change your life and you go to your friends, your family, your network, you're going to really see who your friends and family are. You're going to really see who your network really is. You're going to see who's always been there for you and who's behind the scenes been really envying and loathing you. You'll find that out when you start your own business. And when you find that stuff out, can't take it personally. That's just part of the process. Just know that, have the confidence to know that when you do something big, when you make a big decision, that the right people will be removed from you eventually, and the right people will be brought to you. And you suffer, and the whole thing with suffering, it comes from attachment. So if you get attached to the idea that, oh, well, they're going to operate how I'm operating, you're going to suffer. Yeah. You know, so I try not to get attached to anything really. Yeah. That's the only time people suffer is when there's attachment involved. Yeah. You know, you're not going to freak out if a water bottle right here gets like burned or your table gets burned. You're not that attached to the table, you know? So that's when you got to like choose in life what you're, what's worth getting attached to, which I really think it's people and animals, people and pets. It's about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everything else is pretty replaceable yeah. off top of my head. Yeah, I'm going to add people, pets, and purpose. We'll add a third one. Sure. Yeah. People, pets, and purpose. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But even the purpose, it's hard. You know, you get so attached to that, you can suffer a lot along the way yeah. if things don't go the way you want them. That's, that's what happened to me in 2018. Mm -hmm. I was suffering because it wasn't going the way I was attached to. And once I let go of that attachment to how I thought it was supposed to go, I was fine. Yeah. You know, sure, there's dips and here and there, but for the most part. Yeah, but Ross is talking about the process of evolving that purpose, not the actual purpose itself. So, correct. I mean, don't, don't be disappointed when you when you have hiccups and speed bumps along the way, things don't go your way. That's part of the process. But what Jay Shea is talking about, the overarching purpose of why you're doing it to begin with. I'm good. Yeah, you know? I, yeah I always say to people, you, you get to where you want in life, just not in the way you imagined it. Yeah, or uh, when. Yeah, or when you imagined it. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge, right? It's like you have or reality... <laughs> And then you have your projector screen up here. Yeah. And you're trying to make this projector screen happen, but but this is reality right now. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you're actually going through. Just have faith that whatever you want, you're gonna get it in whatever life you want, you're you're gonna achieve it. But it doesn't matter when. That should be irrelevant. Yeah. I'm reminded of a scripture and it goes like this in Matthew. Ask and it shall be given to you. See and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What a powerful reminder that the things that's been inspired to you, you can actually receive. Now, the question though is when? So just because you say that, okay, I'm asking, I'm seeking, I'm praying, I, 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 I'm knocking on the door. How come it's not happening to me right now? Listen, through faith doesn't mean it's like popcorn 30 seconds later or the next day or the next year or even the next decade. And so when you're looking at this, I mean, I, I didn't realize that uh, Russ was, was as old. He's 28 years old. You would thought he was younger, had experienced younger. So there's a lot of younger artists. I didn't think he was this old as a artist. But obviously he's been working at this thing. He put 500 songs out there so far from the, my understanding of this interview. It takes time to write a song. It takes time to produce and master. 
that song. So when is a condition of time and effort and the effort you put in that time? You know, you ha- you can't put a deadline on your own success. It's crazy. Yeah. It ruins people. You know, you know those people that are like, by 30, if I don't have to, and it's like, then what's, what's going to happen at 30 if you don't? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, what happens? <laughs> yeah. If there's anything, put a deadline on your commitments. I commit to stop eating like this. I commit to stop spending like this. I, I commit to, to stop charging up in credit. I commit to stop overspending. I commit to making sure I increase my income. I commit to getting this license. I commit to getting this education. I commit to going to this conference. So put a deadline on that. When it actually materializes and when it comes through, listen, I, I've said this many times. I paid my entire 30s to repay the mistakes in my 20s. Now that I'm 48 years old, I should be experiencing this in my 30s, not my 40s. You know why? Because I wasn't willing to pay the price fully in my 20s. I was goofing around in my 20s. I wouldn't surround myself with wise people in my 20s. I was spending money because I made more money than a lot of people in my family in my 20s because I started my own business. I wasn't smart with it. I wasn't wise with it. I wasn't surrounded with the right people with it. So if you're going to put a deadline on something, put a deadline to stupidity. Put a deadline to being sick and tired, being sick and tired. From this day forward, I refuse to be sick and tired and sick and tired, and I will start creating things to make sure my life changes. Put a deadline to that. You know? Totally. It's and you crazy. don't know when. Yeah, you don't. Like, you know, you're 28 now. Like, my, my life took off externally. Internally, my journey started at 16. Sure. But nice. externally, my journey started at 28. Wow. And so, See? you know, I'm 33 now. And, yeah. and it's and it's just interesting. It's like, you just don't know when. Shoot. What, what my exter- I think my external st- life started at 42. So it just goes to show you, don't try to compare yourself to other people's age or the time they did. I mean, think about this. Colonel Sanders was in his mid-60s when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, Warren Buffett was not a billionaire until he was in his 50s. Uh, so many other people out there never have levels of success until they're 50, 60, 70 years old. You know, Pastor Keith Kraft here at Elevate Life Church, he said the number one time frame for most men, check this out, the number one time frame for most men, the number one time frame in terms of decade for most men is between 60 and 70 years old. <laughs> the second best time is 70 to 80. The third best time in, in most men's life is between 50 and 60. Why? Because you're spending 10, 20, 30 years of building a skill set, building friendships, building relationships, building alliances, building connections, becoming a better version of you, the next best version of you. God bless those who are in their teens. God bless those in their 20s and 30s. But that's like the exception. And some of you might be the rule like me. You don't start figuring life out until you're in your 40s. And by the way, that's okay. And here's a cool thing about entrepreneurship and capitalism and free enterprise. All the stuff that you missed out on in your 20s and 30s, you can recoup back again in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. Because that's the benefit of those philosophies of entrepreneurship and capitalism and and being your own boss and free enterprise. Benefit is you can make the most amount of money in a 5, 10, 15, 20 year period that you should have made in your 20s. That you should have made in your entire 20s and 30s. It's a benefit of capitalism. I'm just looking at what we, my wife and I have made the last six years. We made more money in the last six years than the previous 14 years combined based on what I'm able to do in the financial services industry. Why? It was just our time. But in the meantime, guess what we're doing? We're putting in the work. We're putting in the time. We're improving our skill. We're getting better with our finances. We're getting better with our improvement with our communication and less arguments. We're getting better with processing issues. We're getting better with conflict resolution. We're getting better at not being so stubborn with one another. <laughs> Just revealing too much about my wife's, my wife and I's marriage. But those are the things that is part of the process and don't get hung up. But, oh man, I'm 28, I'm not successful yet. I'm 30, not successful. Everybody else was, everybody else was. Listen, when I was in my 20s, everybody else was successful. Everybody else that I grew up with that, that uh, chose their own endeavors, that went to college and got the degree. I was thinking about going back to college too as well, but I couldn't do it because I was a single parent and three kids. They were driving in BMWs. They're driving in Mercedes. They're driving in a range. I remember going to a funeral with my family and everybody had luxury cars. I parked my broke Cadillac Seville two blocks away. Now one side of the door cannot, the window didn't roll down. And if I rolled it down, it'd never come back up. I parked it two blocks away, so embarrassed. Now, guess what? Things are completely different these days. Because sometimes you're waiting for, for this success curve to start curving too soon. But then you quit. 
or your momentum and you quit versus those like, like Russ, you keep putting in the work, you keep putting in the work and then next, you know, boom, takes off. And then you keep the foot on the gas and takes off even support until you get to some form of cruising altitude. And again, that's again, based on the dreams and goals and the vision that you have. No, when, what's no. going to happen. And, and you just, but you trusted the what? And you, you believed trust, in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Trust the what. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really beautiful, man. Dude, this has been like, this has been one of the most refreshing conversations yeah. I've had in a long time. Nice. We end every interview, the final five. So this is a rapid fire, fast okay. five. Sick. So you're going to answer every question in one word or one sentence maximum. Fire. So that's for every one of them. Easy for you. You're, you're a lyricist and, <laughs> yeah. and you know, you've, you, this will be easy for you. All right. The first question is. Uh, All right. So they're going the speed round. I uh, wonder what he's going to say here to the question. I have no clue what the questions are that Jay's going to be asking. I wonder what Russ is going to say in terms of word or in one sentence. Let's check this out. What's the best advice you've ever received? What if it can turn out better than you can imagine? Second question. Yeah, look at your situation. You make a big decision. You never think you're going to get to somewhere. Like, for example, I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. Never thought I'd get an insurance license. Never thought I'd become a millionaire. I, the biggest thing I thought was making at least $500,000. So yes, I love that you can make a decision and it becomes bigger than what you thought it was. What's the worst advice you've ever received? Be realistic. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I was told many, many times, just go get a job. You're a single dad. You've got responsibilities. You need benefits. If I became realistic and became more logical instead of tapping into my emotions of my life, I wouldn't be close to where my children are today, what they're experiencing today, my, retiring my parents, retiring my in-laws, uh, traveling the world. If I became too realistic and said, let me just get salary and benefits. Let me just reduce my dreams instead of increasing my skill set to live the life that I really want. That being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with the things I said. You didn't agree with things. What about Russ? Did you agree with some of the things he said? Uh, what other artists would you like for us to react to? I love having these examples of success for us to react to because I appreciate their willingness to put themselves out there for us to learn from them. Because on this channel, the Seven Figure Squad, is from the lens of leadership, it's from the lens of first generation cash flow millionaires, because we want you to say, you know what? I want to go about life. If I'm going to go about life, I want to be financially free because this channel is dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Before I let you go, please check out these two other reaction videos here for other artists, celebrities, and entertainers, and their insights of how they're living their life, failures, and successes, and hopefully you can learn from it too as well. If you haven't done so, if you got value from this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and haven't hit subscribe yet, please consider hitting subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted. And next time we upload our next episodes. From Dallas, Texas, love you, money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.